Hello and welcome to another episode of the Pen Fan series. In this series, we ask Pen Fans three important pen questions. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to do that right now. The guest for this episode is a really special guest because this person is a really, really important guy in the watch community and he also has a quite impressive pen collection. And the first question that we have for this guest is Robert John Brewer, by the way, is how did you get into fountain pens? Thanks for this uh, very nice introduction, uh, Joost. Very much appreciated. Um, well, I think like most uh, kids, uh, you, you learn to write in school with a fountain pen at age uh, six, I think. And um, from that moment on, I always wrote with uh, with uh, fountain pens. And uh, those were these typical school pens, um, um, red barrel silver cap and a green barrel silver cap, depending on whether you were left-handed or right-handed. And during my entire school career, I always had nice pens and not always fountain pens, uh, but also like uh, roller balls and, 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 uh, and uh, ball points. Um, but as soon as I could afford a nice fountain pen, I went to uh, the local uh, uh, pen shop uh, here in uh, The Hague, where I went to uh, university. And I bought a Pelican M200, if I'm not mistaken, this one. And the sales guy over there, the salesperson, he said, well, if you really want to write nicely, you need a gold nip. And for 50 guilders, so that's 20, 25 euros, I will get you a, a gold nip for this uh, Pelican pen. So I did. And he said, oh, basically, now you have an, and I can't remember what he said, M250 or M300, oh, M M400 even. It's basically the same pen that you uh, now have. And I wrote with it during my entire uh, period of studies. And then later on, I bought from a friend who's also into watches. I bought, a, at that time, they were still called a 146. I think now they are called Le Grand, but you know it better than I do. And there's a little logo on it. And I did know, not know what it was, but it's a Warner Bros logo. And it's for the 25th anniversary of Warner Brothers um, music, I think uh, it was. So I used that uh, later on, this uh, Mont Blanc. And then for a long time, uh, I had nothing. And then for uh, my 25th birthday, I received from my mother this Stupula Itruria pen, limited edition. And then later on, when I met my then girlfriend, now wife, she got me for one of my birthdays this M800, uh, M805, I think it is uh, officially. Um, and that got me hooked, but yeah, I, I bought a few Mont Blancs. I bought a Star Walker. I bought, bought some 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 other models, some a, a Meisterstück ballpoint to go with it. And at some point, I had to. I still have the, the Mont Blancs with a diamond in the in the cap, for example. I'm not sure if you know them, but it's uh, they have this little Mont Blanc diamond cut in the in the cap. But I still was not very fanatical. That only started much later. Um, I think it was uh, one and a half, two years ago during the this thing called Corona, this pandemic, <clears throat> that we had a lady in our office. So I'm running this watch magazine called uh, Fratello Watches um, with a lady in the, in the office. And she said, so what do you like besides watches? And I said, well, I like fountain pens and I have a few. So at that time I, I had a few indeed. And um, I like fountain pens and that triggered me somehow. And I started to, to dig into fountain pens again. And yeah, now I have uh, 40 laying in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it feels you, I think you have people that that collect pens and you have people that are hoarders and I'm not sure what I am yet because uh, I have a, <laughs> I have a focus on uh, on uh, on Pelican so I have a few 8 M100s I have an M1000 and I even have this this M800 that was done by Chrono Swiss this uh, this German uh, um, guy uh, Gerrit Rüdiger Lang who passed away recently he had a watch brand called Chrono Swiss and uh, I think in 2000 or 2002, he had these pens made because all the book booklets that came with his watch were always signed with his Pelican pen with green ink. And I, I have a Chrono Swiss watch from the 90s and I have the certificate, which is indeed signed by him with green ink. So that always uh, stuck with me. And I, then I bought some, some vintage pe uh, Pelicans as well, like a hundred uh, and then a, I think a 400 that I have here, which I really love because of this... Uh, 
tortoise uh, kind of uh, um, color. Um, so yeah, I like. Uh, uh, I started to 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 collect pens again and buy pens, and um, I also bought pens that I just I like the look of them. So there's no collecting in a certain brand or uh, col uh, model name of a of a of a certain uh, um, pen that you see with watches. You collect Rolex Day Dates or Submariners, or you collect Omega Speedmasters. And I feel with pens, but correct me if I'm wrong, you often collect brands and not so much. You want to have all 146s there are. It could be, but I don't see it that often. Um, so that's how it started. And um, yeah, I don't think there's an end yet. Uh, I'm still very interested in pens. I look at the auction sites. I look at your uh, website, uh, Joost, uh, quite often to see. But I have to say, recently, I'm much more into colors. So I like a certain color. I really like green as a color. So I'm looking for the perfect green pen with gold, uh, uh, how do you say, a rim and a gold uh, uh, a clip. Um, I, I very much like malachite as a, as a material, but I haven't come across a very nice one yet. So I'm still searching. The day will come for sure. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, let's go to the second question. Because do, actually it's a question in two parts. Because do, the question is, do you match your writing instruments with your watches? And if so, how do you do that? Is it on color or mechanisms or whatever? It's, yeah. So that's the question. Good question. Uh, it's, um, it's more in terms of style, mm -hmm. I would say. So for example, if I'm wearing a, a Rolex Sea Dweller or a Omega Seamaster Pro Prof, like big chunky dive watches, I tend to go for something like this. Otto Hood Design mm -hmm. 8. That is a chunky pen. It's a heavy pen. It also has this, this quite straight design, very uh, um, particular shape, I would say, very quite industrial looking. And I think that fits mm -hmm. that fits a, a, a watch like a ProProf or a Rolex Submariner or Sea Dweller, for example. If I'm wearing a bit more classic stuff, like a Breguet that I'm, that I'm wearing today, I always also would pick a more uh, classic pen, like, well, the Stipula, for example. Mm -hmm. or, or perhaps even uh, more gold colored like this this very simple vintage parker um if i'm wearing for example uh, a nomos watch which is a bit bauhaus style it's very german it's very form follows function i would pick a lamy 2000 because i of feel course. that is very much in in the same line as the uh, uh yeah, it's the watch. If I am uh, like you, Joost, if I'm uh, wearing uh, something more gold, I have a few here. If I'm wearing the day date, for example, mm -hmm. then I think I would pick a 149 because I feel yeah. those are the, it's a suitable pen for that type of watch. So I really try to, it's not so much about color. I think it's more about uh, style and design. Mm -hmm. All right, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, let's go to the last and third question. What is your top tip for using a fountain pen? It's actually very simple. Um, make sure if you use a fountain pen that you have a pouch with the fountain pen because nothing annoys me more. Also with watches that I don't mind if you use it that it gets wear like micro scratches or something like that. But I don't like nice objects like a watch or a pen to get damaged for no reason. And I feel if you just throw your pen into your, your uh, uh, bag or your pocket and it goes with your keys and so on, I feel it's not necessary. Those scratches mm -hmm. and dents are not necessary. So I would say get a nice pouch for one pen or two pens uh, that you will carry your pens in and take good care of them. Um, on top of that tip, I also made the mistake of having a pouch made for me by a, I think it's a Dutch leather company. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, oh, well, I can have one made for four pens. And I did that, but it was a mistake because it's a very nice product. But if you carry around four pens, I never know which one to use. I, I have this dilemma. <laughs> I need to, need to grab a pen to take some notes. And then I open my pouch. There are four pens looking at me. Use me, use me. And then, <laughs> and it's, and then I am with this dilemma. So I would buy a pouch for just one pen or two pens for if you want to carry a ballpoint or something or a fountain pen with a different color of ink. I think that's nice. But I think if you do three or more pens, 
in a in a in a pouch it's uh asking for trouble getting more complicated well thank exactly. you so much for that tip that's actually quite a good tip indeed uh robert john thank you so much for doing this with us uh, everybody thank you so much for watching if you haven't subscribed yet make sure to do that because next week we have another guest we have another pen fan and another pen fan series bye bye <laughs>